All right, guys, let's get back on this project here. It is an ugly, rainy day, end of February, so what better way to spend some time is uh, in the shop making chips. So it's time to cut the slot in the brooch bushing or brooch guide, depending on how you want to call it. And we could just, you know, throw it in the vertical mill, grab an end mill and brrrt. But uh, I need some more time on the uh, horizontal milling. We only did just a smidgen of horizontal milling back in my college machine shop class. So what better way to go ahead and get some time under my belt, you know, doing projects like this that, um, you know, they're not critical if we mess this thing up. So that's what we're going to do. I thought I had a 3 8 cutter, <laughs> but act well, actually I do, but the problem is they're uh, one and a quarter inch bores, and my long arbor here is only a one inch. I got a, a group of cutters, and I didn't even notice that the bore on those were larger. So I've got a 5 16 in there, a four inch diameter that should work. We'll just have to, you know, step over each side to get the width that we need. I have already um, figured my center. Uh, for you guys that are new at this, so what I did is I, I brought the cutter down and used a piece of paper until the cutter grabbed the piece of paper against this vice jaw here. And, you know, then I, I brought the table down. Figured out my distance, you know, the paper was six thou thick. So, you know, move over six thou, that gives me my zero, zero my dial here on the, the Y. Move over half the distance of the uh, brooch guide or brooch bushing, bushing. And then we take half the cutter, we come back and that gives us a center line. So, we are centered up. I think what we're gonna do though is go ahead and just, uh, Cut the shoulder first, and that'll get us down to the main body. And then once we're at the main body, then we can go ahead and get set up and you know, get the depth that we want and cut us a slot. I'll have to, uh, you know, run mist coolant at that point, but we should be able to get some good footage, hopefully. <laughs> so uh, let me get you turned around. We'll get the machine fired up, warmed up, and everything lubed, and uh, we'll go ahead and cut this slot. What do you say? Well, hopefully you guys are in a good spot there. Dialed in uh, 220 thou. It should get us through that shoulder there. Let's see how she goes. I'm just going to hand spray coolant until we get through this. Serious vibration there. All right, take two. I had to snug those bolts again. Again. Thought I had them really tight, but I didn't. I don't know how sharp this cutter is.
Mmm. This is the slowest table feed I can do. Let me try slowing her down just a little more. Well, I slowed her way down, but I'm sure getting some chatter. I said this cutter may not be as sharp as I thought it was. Have to go to plan B here. She sounds awful. So like I said, it sounds painful, but I'm getting through it. This is a third pass. This handheld here is gonna get you a little bit of a horizontal cutting action. I gotta turn your audio down. <laughs> so I made it through last pass. We should be at our depth. I'm shooting for 562. I already filed the edges so we're smooth there. Let's see how we did. Uh, well, that's pretty darn good. I'd say we're at 561. 560, yeah, well, get you there. 560, yeah, one, 562, kind of, I guess the, it's not totally flat down there. Well, can't beat that with a stick. I've been debating whether to put a three axis DRO on this baby, but I tell you what, these dials in these lead screws are on the money sweet so um i'm just gonna I guess step over each side and you know get the uh, width that we need now so i've moved over 34 thousandths cutting it just fine this way Shooting for a width of 382 thousandths. So this is a uh, 382 gauge pin. She fits good. A little bit of movement here at the top. Looks like the cutter cut it you know, a little bit bigger, but as you go down, she's solid. So that works. We got uh, room for a brooch now. Let me get it out and get it deburred. So let's take a look at the uh, brooch bushing. I'm pleased with it, came out well. All I did was duplicate one of the bushings that came in the kit. You know, all the dimensions are the same, except obviously, you know, the, this ID or OD is larger. And we got a good fit, like I said. So, we are ready to rock and roll. Got my quarter inch brooch over here. So we'll go over and get set up in the 20 ton press. I don't know if I mentioned or not, but the belt came in from McMaster Car. So we can uh, go ahead and really test this thing out. I can just kind of hold the motor and hopefully uh, this thing will work. And then we can figure out how to make a base for the motor and mount it on that plate. And we're in the home stretch. Well, hopefully you guys can see pretty good. We're set up here at the press. Just a couple tricks is the brooch likes a lot of lube. Also, I like to put, I've got a cardboard box down here underneath it to catch the brooch just in case. I miss it because if this baby hits the concrete, it's going to shatter. So always put something down there. And then as you get started, you 
I'm going to let it get started and then I'm going to release the pressure so the brooch can realign. And you continue to do that. Hopefully you guys can see if my arm's not in the way. And release off and start again. Sure, she's broaching straight because if she starts getting caddy wampus, it's gonna go ugly real fast. And let me release and get readjusted. get you in close let's see that's a little better get you a little more live action but I think you guys have seen Max or Swan Valley brooch I think you've seen Adam Booth brooch before so it's not rocket science but there's just a few things that you need to do to make sure it works with no drama So just finished the first pass, as you can see, now we gotta add a shim. That'll move the brooch towards the camera and we can get another, uh, I think the shim's like 62 and a half thou. So that'll take us hopefully to uh, about uh, 125. And then of course the other side's 125, so that'll give us 250 and that'll give us a quarter key. Here we go. We should have a nice key and no drama. That's always good. Well, just doing a little test fit. Hope you guys can see that. But we got a nice fit here. So. Pleased with that. So now, next step we got obviously is uh, Drill and tap for a set screw to hold all this together. Over here at the mill, and I figured I'd show you guys the trick I use to locate the top of a key. Most of you guys probably know this, but some of you may not. So what I've done is took a piece of key stock, got on these two blocks here because the, uh, the pulley would bottom out in the vise. So I got to hang in there, tighten your vise up. So now you know your pulley's at 12 o'clock. So you're right with the roll there, and then just take your edge finder, come off the key stock, and now you can figure out your uh, x-axis, and then just come off your pulley, get that edge, you know. Now you got your y-axis, and then you can just go over and you know use the numbers that you need, and then you're directly over the top of your key. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill and tap this off camera because you saw me already do that for the first pulley. So I'll bring you back once I'm done. We are set up over here at the welding table. I'm done with that pulley, so what do you say we give this a try? I'm gonna hold this in my hand. See how this is gonna work before we go any further. Because if this doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to go to plan B, which I'm not sure what that is right now. All right. See if I can hold this. I've got a foot switch. So uh, let's go power up. What do you think? Well, she spins. Sweet. That's good. I guess if I could hold this steady, it'd probably be better. The belt count is right, and same thing with the pulley count, so I'm not sure why she's skipping like that, but. Oh, she does spin, so that's a plus. I think I think once uh, we permanently mount this, then uh, they probably won't skip like that. So sweet. All right, so we're uh, heading in the right direction. So now we can go ahead and uh, 
and we'll build a mount to hold this motor in place and get it on a plate and we're at the home stretch sweet okay so let me uh dig out a piece of aluminum because that'd be fine and um kind of get the diameter of this you know half moon it and clamp her down and go from there <laughs> 